Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creation Podcast, the show where we discuss the science that confirms scripture. I'm your host, Trey, and my guest today is ICR research scientist and geologist, Dr. Timothy Clary. It's a pleasure to have you here, Dr. Clary. It's great being here. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about fossils, Uh, more specifically, the fossil record, Mm -hmm. not the individuals themselves. Uh, For our viewers and listeners, and maybe me, Mm -hmm. I could use a refresher. What is the fossil record? Well, the, the fossil record is, is just the collection of all fossils ever discovered. And so it's whatever's been found, you know, they kind of lump it all together in that big term, the fossil records, like it's a big book, but it's, you know, a record that you play. Uh, now you youngsters know what records are. Right. Back in my day, we had these big LPs. Now you guys are buying them again. Yeah, they're coming back but in it's, style. It's really just, a, you know, whatever's been discovered around the world is a fossil. You know, we're always adding to the fossil mm-hmm. record. We're always finding new discoveries. And so it's just a collection of all the fossils. So it's just, it's a conglomeration mm-hmm. term of everything yeah. that's there. All right. That's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Now I've heard a number of scientists say that the order in which the fossils are found mm-hmm. in this fossil record, uh, that that's indicative of, you know, the evolutionary mm-hmm. sequence. Uh, now as creationists, we don't hold to that idea, but can you, uh, talk about that? Are there problems mm-hmm. with that? Well, that's what we're taught in school when I took my geology classes. If you take a geology class or if you're an earth science class in high school or you take a geology class in college, that's what you're going to be told Mm -hmm. is that the fossils show evidence of evolution, but they really don't. The fossils show sudden appearances and it's in a term called stasis, which means they stay the same and then they disappear Mm -hmm. or extinction. So you see fossils showing up in in the fossil record at different levels. And then you see them stay the same for a while, and they disappear. Mm-hmm. And some of them, you know, start just very limited range. Others have a little longer range. Others, you know, are still alive today. We still see fossils of the same things that are supposed to be, you know, millions of years old, and they're exactly the same today. And that's a bit of a problem for the evolutionists as well, because why wouldn't everything be constantly evolving and changing? Why do we see things that theoretically in their world, 500 million years old or 400 million years old, and yet they're still alive today. Yeah. And so some of these things are a little bit odd. It doesn't really fit the story that they're selling to everybody, but unfortunately they have the microphone, literally, mm-hmm. and so they can tell people what they want. But to me, the fossil record shows sudden appearance, stasis, it's called, staying the same, and then disappearance. And that reflects the global flood. Okay. Well, at this point in time, you do have a mm-hmm. microphone, so mm-hmm. now's the time to use it. That's right. Uh, that's great. Uh, so you... You mentioned this briefly. Uh, you mentioned the flood. Uh, so my next question is, where did all these fossils come from, and why are they in the order they're in? How did they get there? If you read the literature, you listen to the stories that are being taught by the evolutionary scientists, they'll tell you we evolved from you know, marine animals. Mm-hmm. But that's what we see being buried first in the flood. My research has been showing that as the flood progressed, it actually was a, it didn't flood everything right away. It took 150 days, the Bible says, to get to the high point. So as it progressed along, initially what it flooded was these shallow marine areas, which mm-hmm. were pretty extensive in the pre-flood world, it looks like. And so you're going to naturally get marine fossils first. And as you work your way up, eventually you start flooding the land, you start getting land animals. So we didn't evolve and crawl out of the sea. And that's just, it's just a bad story. that has no basis for it because what we see in the fossils is this, they stay the same. And then you suddenly see something else above them and you see something else above that. And so it's really just a record of the water, the what we call ecological zones, ecological zonation. As you go through these different environments, starting with the marine, and mm-hmm. eventually you get to the coastal areas, and you get to higher areas and higher ground areas. The land animals change, the plants change, because you're going higher and higher in elevation. So it's really just a, the order of burial in the flood. Fascinating. And, th- and that totally makes sense as to why, like, I, I forget the mm-hmm. exact number, but like 95% of mm-hmm. fossils are marine fossils, right? Something right. Like and that? and it, even, even T Rexes found in Montana are mm-hmm. found mixed with sharks. There's six different species of sharks in the Hell Creek Formation where they found Tyrannosaurus rex Sioux and most of our T Rexes and lots of other marine fossils as well. And we even find dinosaurs in marine rocks. And the research, as I go around from continent to continent, I see this pattern everywhere. Europe, almost all their Cretaceous fossils are found in marine rocks. They're found in limestones and chalk. Mm-hmm. And so the secular story has to be, well, they got washed out to sea. There's, but animals that wash out to sea, they don't survive. Right. They get eaten. Scavenged. They get scavenged, yeah. and, and then they decay away. 
what's left of them. And so we even found one dinosaur washed out to sea off Norway, 70 miles offshore. Mm. And they drilled an oil well in the North Sea, one and a half miles down. They pulled up a core, which is just a few inches around. And in it, they had a dinosaur bone that they could identify, the actual species of dinosaur, Platyosaurus, 70 miles offshore. So these waves were coming in, not only burying things and mixing marine fossils with the land animals. Mm -hmm. They're also washing some of the land animals, probably many of them back out, just out to sea, just like you'd expect to see. We see this with the tsunami waves. They come in and they go back out. And unfortunately, you know, people are killed because tsunamis, you know, are very, very deadly and Mm -hmm. very, very fast. And that's kind of what we think the flood was like, these huge tsunami waves that kept coming in and burying things. And that's what kind of created the fossil record. So there's an order to the fossil record, but it's the order of burial in the flood. And we see that matched up, you know, continent to continent. We see the same pattern everywhere I look. The same story is there. So there is kind of a, a true geologic column, a global column that's not complete in many places because different waves came in at different times. But that's what gave us the fossil record. And the waves also allow for some mixing mm-hmm. of those fossils. Right. And as some well. of those waves, as, as they transport back, of course, you're going to destroy environments. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly you're going to have completely different animals above it. And that's going to look like what secular scientists or evolutionists call extinctions. Mm. So they have about five major extinctions through the rock record where they think, you know, something happened like an asteroid hit or some other story they have to come up with to explain why suddenly things change dramatically and many animals disappear. But really what that shows is that these environments are now completely inundated globally. So the entire ecosystem at that level is now gone as the water went higher and higher. And now you have a completely different ecosystem above it. And you occasionally get one or two of the same animals, but that's where the dinosaurs disappear. You know, the extinction of the dinosaurs is supposed to be from an asteroid, but the research I did collecting my columns and oil well data across Mexico where this is supposed to hit, the Yucatan area, Mm -hmm. to me, there's not enough melt in the rocks to be a big asteroid. And and there's not even enough what they call iridium, which is this uh, rare earth element that's supposed to come out of when asteroids hit, they send a dust cloud of iridium out. But there's not much iridium there. Only two, I think, of the 10 or 12 wells show any iridium. So to me, I don't know if there really was much of an asteroid impact there. It just seems kind of like a story. But that's the stories they have. They have to tell these stories because they have no way to explain them. Wow. And even some of the paleontologists don't believe that story. Some of them say, well, how did the frogs survive? Because they have frog fossils that go right across that boundary. And, you know, frogs should have been affected by all this acid rain and you all these think. other effects of a, of a major asteroid impact, but they weren't. And so, you know, they, they still push this asteroid. Many, many kids will come to ICR's Discovery Center and they'll talk about, oh, the asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. I'm like, no, not really. That's, you know, the flood buried a lot of them, but the dinosaurs didn't go extinct until after the flood. Right. Because they got off the ark. Like mm-hmm. all the other animals that got on the ark, they eventually went extinct in the last probably century or thousand years, a couple thousand years, not the last century, the last 500 to 1,000 years. Fascinating. So actually that brings me to another point. We had talked in a previous episode about the flood year and about mm-hmm. those sequences. It's interesting mm-hmm. that not only are the sequences in the rock, they're in the, the fossils as well as mm-hmm. they were buried by the, mm-hmm. by the flood. So we've heard of the term missing link before mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and I don't want to dive too deep into this, but let's just talk about it a little mm-hmm. bit. What about transitional fossils? Right. The, the transitional fossils are supposed to be those, you know, fossils where when animals slowly turning into another. And that was mm-hmm. Darwin's original idea. And he said there should be millions of transitional fossils all over at his, you know, 1859. He said, well, we just haven't found enough fossils yet. To, we'll, we'll fill those pieces in. But we never have. 160 years later, we still haven't found any indisputable transitional fossil. There's, there's a few that they pull out and say, well, this is kind of a transitional one. But then more people study it and they realize it's really not. And so even the evolutionary or the secular community disagrees on, you know, the few that they have, you can count them pretty Mm -hmm. much on two hands uh, that they try to point to occasionally, but even those are all disputed. So they really aren't, you know, you'd expect to see if evolution is true, animals of all types just slowly changing. We see a lot of variation. Right. You know, there's see that today. There was over a thousand dinosaurs named, but there's really only about 60 kinds. Mm. You know, there's, there's just a lot of variety, just like you and I look different, you know, most humans look different. Even if you're a twin, you generally there's something that you can tell, you know, look a little bit different. Uh, so just like 
you know, most of God's created animal world, there's variation and variety everywhere. And so we see all these fossils, and they name them all new species because right. they're slightly different. Mm. And so if you were to find, you know, poodles and St. Bernard's and any dog breed, which are all the same species, right. any dog breed, if you found their bones, they would all be called different species because right. they look quite different from one another, but yet they have the same general shape. Yeah. But that's how dinosaurs and most fossils are named. They'll, but we really don't see anything changing from a dog to some other animal or, or into a dog. And we don't know where dinosaurs came from. There's a big debate of where did dinosaurs, you know, if you're an evolutionist, where did they evolve from? Mm -hmm. We just see things showing up suddenly fully formed, completely, you know, the long necks show up fully formed, it's long tails, long necks. Mm -hmm. You know, the T-Rexes show up with their teeth and their short arms, they just show up as T-Rexes. There's no animals in the rocks below to show a transition to those animals. There's no halfway point. Yeah. And that's the way it is to all the rock record. The most amazing thing to me is the, is the and Darwin talked about this, is the, the Cambrian explosion. Mm, I've heard of it, yes. And that's where we believe that's some of the first rocks that started to flood the land, bringing in those marine fossils that we see around the world. We see the, the initial flooding and that's, events. So, so evolutionists have a problem with the Cambrian explosion mm -hmm. for... Uh, from my understanding, mm -hmm. it's it's where all of a sudden we have what we would consider complex mm -hmm. life in the in the record, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, even eyes. The, yeah. the trilobites, you know, have these amazing compound eyes, which baffles the evolutionary world. How do you explain those? Uh, lately, the evolutionary community has been trying to downplay the the Cambrian explosion, say, "Oh, it's not really an explosion," but it really is. I mean, even in their time scale, it's you know they're saying, oh, "Well, it took millions of years," but you know, for them, that's a blink in their eye. Mm. And so it really is. Suddenly there's all forms of life. Almost every animal phyla just shows up instantly all over the world in the Cambrian rocks. So it really is this explosion. And we explain that as flood geologists, as that's the first major advances of the seas as they start to flood the land. Right. It didn't flood everything. Again, there's a progressive flood. Boy, we start seeing these initial marine fossils. So, of course, you're going to see representatives of every major phyla because you're washing those what's down in the ocean, and suddenly burying them on land in a bunch of sediment. So you see a complete ecosystem right off the bat. Mm. And that's exactly below that. They've, they've studied and studied and studied. They try to find it. You know, the trilobite is a big critter that's found, an arthropod, in the Cambrian. Right. And they look below that to try to find ancestors to those. And they have done concerted efforts looking, and they find nothing. There's nothing like a trilobite in the rocks below. Below the Cambrian, which we think is the bottom rock layers, mostly of that initial sequence that floods the land, that the sock sequence we call it. Below that, there's really nothing besides just a few, what could be earliest flood sediments in a few places called Ediacaran fossils. And then below that, it's mostly just algae, stromatolites and things that build up these algal-type mounds that built up almost like a bacteria. And there's really very little in terms of animal fossils at all. In the mm. rock record, it all kind of starts at just before the Cambrian in a few places in what's called the Ediacaran, which we think might be the initial flood effects. And then that suddenly you get that explosion of life when you start to really flood the land and, and bring in these animals called the Cambrian explosion, which is the initial sock sequence, Right. which we think that really marks the beginning of the flood. Okay. So then uh, personal question mm -hmm. here, what is the... Uh, um, Below the Cam the the Cambrian explosion, that Precambrian, uh, is is the assumption then that those were also buried in like the f flood itself, like in the very mm -hmm. earliest stages. It's not right. um, some of in in selected locations we're okay. seeing that. We're, we're trying to keep track of that in the research I'm doing. We're trying to keep track of the pre sock sequence or the Precambrian mm -hmm. sediments, and, and unfortunately, a lot of those sediments got kind of cooked in the process of the flood and the plates moving around. They're pretty and low so in the they, sequence, they right? Some of those become metamorphic rocks. Right. And they get distorted. And so eventually we kind of lose the record. But we can still see some fossils. Most of them are, you know, algae or bacteria-type fossils, you know, the stromatolites. We see mm -hmm. those quite commonly. Uh, there's a little bit of what's called the Ediacaran, where we see some strange-looking animal-like things or maybe plant-like things. Uh, but those are, they almost kind of look like plants, but I think they're technically animals. Mm. And those are only in selected locations around the world, so we don't. Uh, you've got little bits and pieces. It appears when the Cambrian came in, there was also a major erosional surface called the Great Unconformity, which is pretty much global as well. Mm 
So there's a lot of erosion as these waves kind of work, work their way in as they start to flood the land. So you deposit all this animals of every type from the, from the oceans, and you're also below that you have a big erosional surface as the waves were coming in, they were eroding as they went. And so a lot of the Precambrian sediments were eroded away at that point as well. But there's still remnants of them. Some areas quite extensive. Hmm. Like in Africa and even here in the United States, there's some locations where we can see Precambrian sediments near some of these rifts, like the mid uh, continent rift up that runs through Lake Superior and down into Iowa. And you can still see on the flanks of those some of these fossils, stromatolites, and, and other Precambrian fossils. Right. But again, it really it all begins with the, the flood really kicks into gear in the Cambrian. Right. And we see that universally. And that's where you see suddenly everything shows up. And again, they... Because they drowned. The, and the question for the evolutionists is, how did we get from these little Ediacaran fossils, strange little things, or algae all of a sudden to all these animals like trilobites? Mm-hmm. You know, where did they come from? And they, they can't find any. There's no answers. So the, the story of you know evolution that they see marine animals becoming land animals and all these different things is just a story. It doesn't really fit the, the rock record because we don't see those transitions between them. And they, you know, they, they have a handful they try to point to once in a while, but they, they all fall kind of through the cracks because other people dispute them in the evolutionary world even. Right. And so they, no unfortunately, solid. we just see the order of burial in the flood. And, yeah. and occasionally we see these big extinctions that they call extinctions. They're not really extinctions. They're just a major shift. Some of those kind of line up even with these the mega sequences we talked about in an earlier episode. Right. As the waves kind of come in and go, we see you know different different animals and different plants are buried at different levels as the water progressed higher and higher. So those major changes, when you suddenly lose something, you completely inundate that environment, and you go to the next rocks above it you see a, a, such a major difference, right. they call that an extinction event. And so, the, like I think we talked about earlier, the dinosaurs all disappear about the end of the Cretaceous. Mm-hmm. And it's not coincidence, that's why they call it the, they, they change the name Cretaceous to the to the next levels above it because so many fossils disappear there. Right. So the, it's kind of a circular reasoning to, to say that's an extinction event that happened there because that's how they name those particular rock layers. They were based on the fossil changes. Named the fossils so, from the rocks right. and the rocks and from so, the fossils. So, yeah, yeah, all the fossil names that came in order to and all those yeah. names came about because of changes in the fossils. Mm-hmm. And that's really just a record of the progressive flood. As yeah. you change different environments, you get different animals start showing up. As the water got deeper and deeper under the continents, you, you see that progressive change of fossils as well. So it matches what I'm seeing in the, in the sediments. A progressive flood explains the fossil record just as well as it explains the progressive flood we see across the continents. And the two kind of go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And and it's all described in the Bible. Yeah. You know, you read Genesis 7, it's a progressive flood. And so we get exactly what we'd expect to see. But the evolutionists have to come up with their own story. They want to push God out of the picture. Right. So they have developed their own story, and they throw in this deep time, millions and billions of years, which they need. They kind of need both pillars. They need, you know, slow, progressive evolution. And to do that, they need... Billions and millions of years, right. and so they kind of have to have both those pillars of time and and evolution going on. But yet, when you look at the fossils, the fossils don't show a progressive change. They see sudden changes, a progressive flood, but not progressive evolution. That's awesome. I love your work. It's it's great to see. Like this is all such a new thing, right? It's mm-hmm. it's no one's done this before. But it's, and it's and it, and it's it's kind of refreshing in that regard because it really is showing what the Bible has told us all along, yeah. we're just filling in some of the details, some of the little bit of wisdom that God's allowing us to see of what happened in the flood year. You know, he gives us major dates, like day, you know, how the flood begins, day 40, the ark is floating, uh, you know, so you know you're flooding the land, and the day 150 seems to be the high point, and we can match that up to the geology and the fossils as well. Yeah. And they all kind of show a similar pattern. Tell you what, I am glad that I was not around mm-hmm. during the flood. That mm-hmm. sounds like a terrifying mm-hmm. event. Well, um, yeah, once that door shut, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they, they ate people that got on the ark. The rest of the people, their fates were sealed. But it was a, a slow, painful judgment right. because initially those first 40 days, it was probably just flooding the shallow seas. So they knew something was mm-hmm. going on. And then, you know, tremendous amount of rain, which probably never happened before either. Mm-hmm. And then the waters kept coming higher and higher as you made more and more 
new ocean crust through the plate tectonics and that's another story in itself. Right. And But as the water kept getting higher and higher, of course, the waves kept coming up and up and up. And I believe humans are probably living at the highest elevations right. in the pre-flood world. Makes sense. So with many of the common mammals, you know, horses and lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Yes. And you don't find those with dinosaurs. And right. So I think they're at higher elevations and the plants are different at higher elevations and more of the common flowering plants we see. Whereas dinosaurs at a little lower elevation we live in more swamp areas. And they're different plants, not more of the ferns and the non-flowering plants. And so the evolutionists, of course, interpret that as plants evolved as well. Right. But really it's just a, you know, just an elevation levels where plants are living at different elevations, just like the animals were. Right. And so we don't really find a lot of certain animals with dinosaurs, but we do find squirrels with dinosaurs, squirrel-like animals, beaver-like animals, things that lived in the swamps. You know, there are mammals mm -hmm. that lived in these swamps. They're just not... Uh, Horses and camels. And no rhinos. need for millions of years. There's none of that. Yeah. When you look at the, the truth of God's word and you look at the rock record and you look at the fossil record and you look at it, they actually match. Mm. You see a progressive flood starting in the marine realm, working your way up to you know, the land animals, starting with the swampy areas, but they're also mixing those with marine. As I mentioned, T-Rex mm -hmm. is with marine animals, and you know, that's universal around the world. And then you go higher, you see the mammals. Most of the mammals were deposited as the water was receding because mm -hmm. it went over the top and kind of washed them back down. So there's probably a lot of mammal fossils even offshore, just like that dinosaur I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. as well. But to me, the, you know, the, the, the evolutionary community has not adequately explained why these animals, not just in the Cambrian, but throughout the rock record, everything shows up fully formed, ready to go. Yeah. Wow. At each level. As you go along, there's really no transitions between them. You just go from one environment to the next as you bury them. You know, it just there's these sudden changes. They use those to come up with their names and you know say this is the Cambrian, this is the Ordovician, this is Silurian, etc. But they still can't explain why did they change. Yeah, they don't a have progressive the flood makes more sense. Absolutely. I mean, simplest solution, mm -hmm. right? It's the order of burial. That's but, what it is. But when you want to put God out of the picture, it makes more sense almost to craft a, a strange false mm -hmm. narrative, right? And unfortunately, that's become ingrained in our, our world today because mm -hmm. they've been teaching this for 160 years. Yeah. And it's become science. Yeah. And like, well. Every kid who goes, mm -hmm. even watches TV for sure, it's just, it, it's uh, even even raised in a Christian home. Like I grew up kind of thinking some things that were incorrect mm -hmm. and my parents didn't even hold those views. It just kind of seeped in from mm -hmm. media and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it seems like everybody believes an asteroid killed the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of Christians don't think that dinosaurs were on the ark, right? but they really were. You know, God didn't exclude any animals. He mm -hmm. brought all kinds and the Bible doesn't refer to dinosaurs because the word wasn't invented until after the the, 1800s, know, right? Yeah, the, you know, in 1611, you had the King James Version, there's no dinosaurs. Right. So, so they couldn't put the word in there. But they, I think the Bible does talk about dinosaurs in the book of Job. For sure. It mentions, you know, dragons here and there. Those were probably dinosaurs after the flood. And so there's there's evidence out there, a lot of carvings and paintings and writings even about dinosaurs after the flood. Dinosaurs were on the ark. They got off the ark. But again, they went extinct like many animals did since the Ark landed about 4,500 years ago, so they, there's been a lot of time. And you don't make fossils today. Right. Because fossils need to be buried fast, and you need to bury them deep. To make a fossil, it's got to be a rapid and deep burial. And even many of the evolutionary community are starting to admit that now. That you can't just have something die and fall and lays the there for six months or a year or so, and it then get slowly eaten. gets buried. Yeah, it gets eaten, Yeah, and then it rots away. And so you don't have this survival uh, that's, that they kind of implied. So they're now admitting that, okay, there were these little catastrophes, major floods, but they still don't believe in a global flood. From one big one. To me, the global flood still solves all their problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes the most mm -hmm. sense. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, that begs the question then, um, what about the humans? We have all these other fossils, and I know that we have you know bits and pieces of human fossils, but why aren't there more? Well, it's it's hard to argue without having data. You know, mm -hmm. there's there are very few human fossils, but there's there's a few with in the uppermost rock layers. And I think part of the problem is that humans were probably living at the highest levels 
and they were flooded last, like mm. the lions and tigers and the bears that are living up in those areas. And so just like you don't find humans and dinosaurs mixed, you know, there's a possibility we could, and some people say that maybe there's some footprints here and there, but there hasn't been any really confirmed cases of mixing of dinosaurs and humans. Uh, but I think they were living at higher levels, so we mm. wouldn't expect them to be mixed in there necessarily. And if you're buried last, one of the last things to get buried, if you're not buried deep enough, you're not going to become a fossil. Gotcha. And a lot of the humans might have also washed offshore. And Just floated and in the As the water, water was receding. And so many of the you know, major, they might be buried offshore. Mm. We'll never find them probably unless we drill an oil well and get lucky like they did with that. That dinosaur yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for the most part, uh, I think the humans just weren't buried deep enough gotcha. to become a fossil. You got to be buried fast and deep. And deep can vary depending on the conditions, but generally it's they it, it probably weren't buried deep enough. And there's been erosion in the last 4,500 years. So if they were buried in the upper layers, they might have eroded away. There was an ice age that came on after the flood that might have scoured away some of the rocks at the highest levels as well. And so we might have had more fossils of humans. If it wasn't for the you know forty five hundred years of erosion on the uppermost layers, right. where they might have been buried or laid at the surface even then. So if you're not buried fast and deep, and they were probably buried fast, but they might not have been buried deep enough gotcha. or are offshore. But again, it's it's hard to argue exactly what happened to the humans. Other than we assume they were probably last. Yeah, and uh, they could get to the high without ground. data, it's 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 a little more speculative. Gotcha. That makes sense. That's a very good answer. Thank you. Well, uh, any closing thoughts? Well, just that, you know, again, keep in mind that today, you know, fossils aren't forming. Yeah. Only the conditions of the flood provide the real, you know, I guess they're... Mechanism? The, the real mechanism, yeah, yeah, the real mechanism and the opportunity for millions and billions of fossils to form. And that's what we see. That's what gives us the fossil record. Yeah. But it's mixed in the rock record. They're kind of, the, you know, they go hand in hand. Brother and sister, there you go. And they all show progressive flood. They all can be best explained by a progressive global flood as described in the Bible. Awesome. Which was a judgment. It was, yes. You know, and, and that's and that's why they all died, right? That's, that's the that's, reason. That's right. But God has given us salvation through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about the coming judgment. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Clary. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you to all of our viewers and listeners for tuning in. We're so glad you could join us. Uh, remember that this podcast is available on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, share this with all your friends and families. We'd love for this podcast to reach everyone that it can. Uh, and with that, I'm Trey. This has been the Creation Podcast, and we'll see you next time.